Frankly, there's a lot of things that are confusing about the A's and their potential to end up in Las Vegas. <laughs> but one thing that has really stood out to me is just how unified the front has been from all parties in the way that they feel about A's ownership and how they've treated Oakland. Foul Territory TV, this is a great company on social media. Check out some of these posts. They've rounded up some of the biggest names in baseball and all of them unanimously are not carrying the commissioner's water here. They're speaking out against the A's ownership group. You might say, well, what are you talking about, Ken? They draw 5,000. Yeah, they draw 5,000 and you know why? Because the owner, John Fisher, has wrecked the club. And again, they have done a poor job with that ownership lately. I mean, all the different stories with the cheap food they try to give to the minor leaguers. Uh, none of it's been good. That team is the worst in baseball. We've got probably a half dozen really terrible teams. They're easily the worst. I mean, no one could debate that. I, I just think if you're if you're not in the game to try to win a World Series, then I don't think you should be a, an owner. I really don't. Man, if we could just add a piece or two to this roster with Simeon and, and Olsen and Chapman and all the and all those guys, and I'm like, if we just add one or two pieces with Bomel, um, we got a chance to do something special here. I can't stress enough. Ken Rosenthal, John Heyman, and of course Chris Bassett in there, who did play for the A's when they were at their peak just recently. Let's go back to Bassett's comments, though. I've actually heard walking around talking to people as well talking to people that were on that team, that they really did feel they had something special those years, that they had something really going with that nucleus, but they just didn't get that one last bit of support to get them over the hump. And as a result, the team got torn down in order to save some money. Now, listen to this. Jeff Van Gundy, national broadcast, ESPN, Warriors Lakers, game two at Chase Center, took time in the middle of the game <laughs> to say that he thinks John Fisher should sell the team. To Alex Rodriguez, I know, Alex Rodriguez, that'd be an interesting conversation with Dallas Braden on the mound if A-Rod did buy the team. But here's what he had to say. And I hope Alex Rodriguez is here partly to try to buy the Oakland A's. The greatest baseball dynasty from 72 to 74 that Major League Baseball has ever seen. And to see them at six wins now, it's so disappointing. I hope he buys them. So what's interesting is, a lot of people are coming out against what John Fisher's done and supporting Oakland's side of the situation. Normally with something this big, you'd think Major League Baseball, the commissioner, would have people carrying water for him. In this case, no. It's almost universal support for Oakland, universal repulsion for what's going on with the Oakland Athletics and what John Fisher is trying to do. Now, I think it's really interesting that John Fisher is not willing to get this deal across the finish line in Oakland, is now turning to a quick possible pump and dump in Las Vegas. And I think it's fascinating because if you look at his recent track record, like Chris Bassett said, not getting them over the hump, tearing down the roster, combine that with some other information we've seen, like this from Vitamin D on Twitter, who's just an incredible resource. He found two documents that show that the A's and the San Jose Earthquakes that John Fisher also own have liens against them, meaning they've borrowed against those franchises. We don't know how much the amount is for, and it could be nothing, but it is an interesting thing to look at when you consider that John Fisher also has offered up limited partnerships in the ownership of the San Jose Earthquakes, served up minor leaguers, some of the most foul, rank, and just cheap and weird meals, and also tried to take away their stipends. The A's were the only team in Major League Baseball that went down the path of potentially taking away their minor leaguers pay. They ended up having to back off on that. But just consider, if you're a major league franchise and you're trying to bring up minor leaguers and then get them to later sign deals with you, in an ideal situation, you'd be trying to get them to sign deals with you, not the A's deal where they just trade everybody away, but why would those guys ever wanna stay with this team and organization? if you treat them like that when they're minor leaguers. It just doesn't make any sense. Then there was the crazy deal they offered Marcus Semyon when he was about to walk. All they had to do was extend a qualifying offer to him and they could have kept him for another year. Instead, <laughs> they offered him this crazy 10 year deferred deal where he would get a million dollars a year for 10 years after his initial payment. What does that tell you you're doing as a baseball organization? It is so bizarre. Combine that with the fact that Gap stocks are tumbling every single day and have lost a lot of value. It just paints a weird picture 
a picture that this guy may not have the fortitude or the finances to finish the deal. And you saw them rapidly pull out of Oakland because in Las Vegas, they have a situation now where if they can get these public funds, find a way to get the government to yes, they can boost the value of the franchise without having to put much back in. And there is where they're going to be. Las Vegas for now, trying to find a way to hammer out a deal in a very short window. And if they can pull it off, the value of the franchise will skyrocket. Maybe they'll do it. Vegas is a can get to yes place. That's what they're trying to do out there. Get to yes. Oakland, Bay Area, much tougher place to build, much tougher place to secure a deal. But if you really look at what's going on here with John Fisher, the owner of the A's, people have not been on his side here. You're not seeing anyone speak out in his favor on his behalf. He's a guy that inherited his fortune. Self-made score of two. Philanthropy score of two out of ten in both regards on the Forbes billionaire list. He's looking to find money everywhere but his own pocket. We'll see if he ends up finding it in Las Vegas.